Welcome to Chapter 3 of Death to Bushido, uh, a Heroes and Hardships uh, mini-campaign and adventure coming to you soon-ish. Um, today we uh, start off where we left off um, with uh, our samurai and their um, followers, retainers, hangers-ons, what do you want to call them, uh, in the tea house in the Honoji district of Kyoto. Um, the previous episode had seen our protagonists um, confront Shinju, the proprietor of said tea house, and Geisha Madam. Uh, she ended up, uh, before their eyes, turning into a what appeared to be a hybrid snake slash woman. Um, those uh, in the know um, would call that a, a Nure Ana. Um, which is basically a hybrid snake person. Um, her corpse before you now, after she was defeated, is a simple woman. Uh, she's cut up and battered from uh, the many wounds she has taken from Onozaki, Katsuyori, and Makiko. Um, Makiko also is injured with her right arm uh, cut badly. Um, during the fight, uh, Katsuyori had fallen under some sort of spell and, for the most part, had done the greatest amount of damage to his comrades. Uh, eventually, he broke out of that uh, control and began to fight again against the Oni and her uh, guardians, which uh, seemed to be uh, Kabuju Yakim or I'm sorry, Kabu uh, Kabu Kimono. Um, the uh, ronin and uh, peasant warriors that have descended on this district um, in the time since Nabunaga's death. Uh, standing in this place, uh, you all um, begin to consider the aftermath of the battle, and I'll let you guys take it away. Onozaki is going to, uh, um, I think when I left off, he was trying to help uh, her stand. And, um, Toahila! Mm. Makiko shakes her head. No, there's no time. I'll be fine. I, we have to press on. You are far from fine. We must, we must get you to safety immediately. Have your wounds taken care of. We still need to find where she, where she took the child. Leave that to us. I, I am responsible for your wounds. I will bear this shame. Allow me to redeem myself by taking on this task for you. Mm, Mikiko, still standing a bit stone-faced to Katsuyori. She nods once in agreement. I, I agree. This you will do. What came over you, Katsuyori, son? I will tell you what I know, only that I saw enemies all around me. I felt rage, not the rage that you control in the heat of a battle, but unbridled, unrestrained. I saw you as a foe. It is my weakness that caused this, whatever trickery of the witch. I can only offer my apologies, and if... My lord will have it. My head, when this is finished. And Mikiko ponders for a moment, shakes her head. No, they are foul. I do not know magics going on here. 
I do not believe it was your fault, Katsuyori san, as you seem the honorable type. So she looks to uh, Mitsutaka and Father Foster. I am unsure if these two will be able to fully assist should the time come in battle. When he mentions his head, uh, Onazaki uh, shifts his gaze towards uh, Katsuyori very quickly and uh, speaks up. Uh, it was probably the same dark magic that took your mind as well, Makiko-san. She sighs a bit at that. I wish it was dark magic, Sonzaki san. But it was but leverage that she had over me that I did what I did. I am ashamed to say that the leverage of my child that she had over me caused me to do such dishonorable things. I can not believe that. Uh, I am sure she influenced you in some way. And uh, he looks past her and Katsuyori to uh, Mitsutaka. Did you see which way the other one fled? M Mitsu points off through the doorway that the guy ran out through. And he approaches Katsuyori and kind of gives a little bow and sort of looks Katsuyori over, looks at his eyes with, without being too forward, kind of sniffs around him, wants to use his streetwise to see if he thinks Katsuyori was was drugged in some way or you know, or maybe this mm. is yeah like, yeah go ahead and you can give uh you can do a streetwise with a hardship okay. this should prompt you and you can just put a hardship in there TN for difficult rolls, or which is pretty much everything, is 14, so. I think that's under empathy. Holy smokes. That's a good roll. It's very yeah, good. Pretty... And it's not even there's not even a negative three. You don't have an injury anymore. Um Yeah, so take that off. So uh fifty eight. Um Yeah, let me uh, let me whisper you. Mm, he furrows his brow and sort of nods again uh, respectfully and steps away from Katsuyori kind of scratches his head and Katsuyori looks at Mitsutaka kind of squints his eyes but assumes there was good reason for that as the this merchant type has not been very deceptive with them thus far and he looks to. Um, oh, if if anything, you you would more about you than anything else. He he looks to um, Makiko and Onozaki and 
Whatever the case, Onozaki-san, it is my responsibility to maintain my composure in all events. I failed to do so. And Makiko-san, though these two are not warriors, they stayed when many others would have run. They face down enemies, whatever their skills. They have some metal, even the Gaijin. You may rest easy knowing that we will take on this task and accomplishment. My will, I will not allow it to fail again. Makiko just nods to Hey, you are correct. He's too, uh, indeed, very brave. Hey, Raven, you're, you're robotting on us. Just so you know. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Yeah, really digital. Oh, well, you guys sound better all of a sudden. Yeah, you sound better now. Go ahead and try. Let's try. Um, so, Mitsu notices a, a odd-looking wooden box. He approaches it. This seems out of place. Yeah, it's extremely ornate, but... You can tell it's not <clears throat> it it has a lot of metal on it like the hinges and everything and it's not not something you would see locally hmm. uh, he will back him off the road. say that again uh, he, he will beckon Father Festino over. Father, is this something from your land? And when you comment over to Father Festino, you notice that he's actually walking back down the hall towards you. Um, he had just stepped out and told Mario to give him the rest of the gear, the, the satchel, and told Mario to uh, run back to the ship. Um, so that he can be safe there. And then headed back. And as he's headed back, you can see that his eyes are wide and his hands are still shaking a little bit to the point to where you can hear just a little bit of a, a clatter on the rifle that he's carrying uh, as he's walking. And his eyes are wide. And as he walks, he kind of gives Takimaru a, a wide berth after watching him attack Mori Makiko not quite understanding what happened there. He gives him a wide berth as he walks around, keeping an eye on him, and heads over to you. Father Festino, when you see this box, you would recognize it as a small chest or a footlocker. Uh, it would be fairly common in Europe. Um, so he sees it, but, uh, he, he doesn't quite understand, you know, what, what point, uh, Bujo is trying to make, um, what is it about this chest that uh, is interesting to you? Is Raven still here? I don't know. Raven? No. Doesn't sound like it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh she too. Um he re responds that, you know, it is unnatural for our kind. Test. Yep. Hey. Are you back? Yes. Can you hear Doc there? He just asked you what uh, was unusual about the box. Oh well, and, and Mitsu explains that it's it's not of Japanese origin doesn't appear to be of Japanese origin. And wonders if if it comes from the father's country. Yeah, Father Festina looks at you and just kind of raises an eyebrow and uh, chuckles just a little bit. He said, "Well, no, this this is European. It appears in in decoration and design and craftsmanship. Uh, definitely more, I'd say." Unwieldy. Look at this metalwork here. What I have noticed about your homeland's craftsmanship is the smooth lines and the 
seamless edges. And here you have plates of metal and rivets hammered in, brass. This is definitely European. Do you happen to know where it came from or maybe a gift from someone else? No, I, I know nothing of it. It merely stood out as alien. Father Festina just is it is it locked? He's just gonna open it. No, it's not locked. Yeah, he just he just flips the, the lid open. The first thing you notice that's strange is there's a tanto inside, which is a um, a knife, and there is a parchment of paper with it. So Father Faustino, ignoring the knife, reaches down and grabs the paper. Um, you pull the paper up, and uh, why don't you give me a literacy roll? That is under... Literacy is under knowledge. Knowledge. Okay, I do have it. Just wanted to make sure. Oops, why is that doing that? Okay. Yeah, you read it. It's actually... um. The script is actually in uh, Spanish, so you know enough Spanish to read it. Um, I'm going to whisper you what it generally says. I don't have a handout for it, but... You guys see Father Festino. He picks up a somewhat weathered piece of paper out of, the, out of this little box, and his lips are moving just barely perceivably as he's reading to himself. As he reads, uh... Mikiko looks to Onozaki and Katsu. If you are to drop me off at the healers, I will send Aki with you. The girl, is that wise? She knows her way around the city better than any of you. She can still function as your guide. We will do our best to make sure that no harm comes to her. She can handle herself, but thank you, Katsuyori san. Um, did she had decided to seek healing? Is that what Mikiko was doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what she mentioned. And um, and Onozaki had been wounded as well in the leg. Is, is he okay? Or? Yeah, he's okay. I, so I did, just so uh, you guys know, I think I mentioned it. I did the, the wound rolls um, after the session, and uh, yeah. Onozaki's was not bad enough to linger. Uh, Makika, one of two of Mikiko's lingered, but it was only a negative one to all her dex skills, which include um, swords, which is the only dex skill she has, I think. Okay, so while Mikiko's talking to Onozaki, he was making his way over to the door to where the other uh, enemy had escaped from, and uh, he takes it piece of cloth that he finds laying around or maybe tablecloth or whatever's available to uh, to uh, mm -hmm. stop the bleeding from the wound and um, and he looks back towards them and says um, um, perhaps when we find any clues about where your son 
is located. We will come back for you, Makiko-san. Uh, Shinju said before she died that she served someone else. It was not just her doing this. She said she served the greatest samurai there ever was. So he thinks yeah, about that sorry, for a minute. Oh no, I'm just he, he, he thinks deeply about this for a minute and um uh but he doesn't say anything. Um so out of character tab, would I recognize that name in the note? That sounds familiar to me. Yeah, go ahead and give me a lore roll. Um, lore is under Lore is under knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah, you would know everything. Do, do you need me to tell you out of character who he is, or? Yeah, remind me. I mean, I know we've heard the name already, but I've I've already kind of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's right. So, um, Father Faustina turns back to uh, Mitsutaka and uh, explains what he found in the note there. Um, it's it says in this in this note that uh, there was a, a trade a, a trade of goods for for rifles. Uh, ordered by Oda uh, Nobunaga, but someone else, some someone else's handwriting here in in Japanese, talking about. And he glances over at Mitsutaka, examining the blade. It says something about uh, the sacred blade, uh, the blade of one. One's blood for honor is what it says here. And he hands him over the note so they can read the the Japanese portion. It's two different people definitely writing this, but uh, I'm not sure what it means. Surely it must be an old letter. There is... Oda Nobunaga is dead. Well, I mean, how many uh, contracts for rifles have been ordered? I mean, as far as I know, I am one of the first to come here with these rifles. But I don't understand how Nobunaga could have requested the order. And look, look here. This is dated right here. And he, he grabs the paper again out of uh, Mitsutaka's yeah, hand and Mitsu holds it out. Paper. It's dated six months ago. Ted, for reference, how long go ahead? How long has Oda been dead at this point? Almost twelve months. Yeah, Katsuyori shakes his head. That must not be. And he look at the letter. And... We have seen some strange things today, but surely it must be a pretender. Oda died in the Oji incident. There is no. No way he still lives. It is impossible. Maybe the one that Shinju serves. Some sort of impersonation. 
Well, someone is using the dead man's name in order to receive these weapons. And then, I don't know what the rest of this means, but Sacred Blade? Wants blood for honor? It's all very confusing. Cassior will look at it. Look at the Japanese. But she hands it to Katsuyori. Yeah, it, it says um, in the margin it's written there's a, a expert calligraphy uh, from your point of view. Uh, it just says the blade of one's blood for honor. That's all. Everything else is um, completely gibberish to you. You don't know what it is. The rest of the letter. Mm. Mm. And it back to Mitsu. A blade is a blade. We will carry it, perhaps. Mitsu gives a little bow and offers the blade to Katuri. I do not use such weaponry. He kind of puts his hand on the um, on the uh, handle of his own blade. You open the box, keep it. I do not wish for a witch's goods. Mitsu will give a little bow and he'll tuck the blade away in his sleeve for knives seem to vanish. Mitsu, can you give me a perception roll? <clears throat> it's under senses. At any rate, we should get Makiko-san back to the healer and then proceed to find this last ruffian, see what he knows. And then perhaps to Onoji. Hi. Hi. Uh, Onozaki walks over to Makiko and... And, uh and inspects her wounds. Um, is she able to walk with us? Yeah, she's she's actually not in as bad of shape as you had thought. Um, since you guys were wearing your armor, uh, you notice that a lot of the scales on the Lamlar armor uh, seem to be damaged. Um, you're not given a full inspection here, taking her armor off and all that stuff, but... Um, and she doesn't, her arm hurts pretty bad, and then her previous wound also hurts, but uh, she's in better shape than you had thought after the devastating strikes from Katsuyori. Luckily, her um, her armor must have held up. How do you feel, Makiko-san? I will not lie, I am in pain, but... It is not something that will distract me. It is not as bad as I thought. Perhaps a quick trip to the healer is all you need. Maybe. But over to you... Katsuyori and, and nods. All right, Dozo, let us go now. Yep. Uh, are you heading to Hatsuo, the magistrate's office? Yeah. Okay. You, um, 
exit the tea house and you see that there's some people starting to peer um, towards the area hearing the commotion um, you exit uh, everyone gives you a very wide berth um, and you head straight over to the magistrate's office which is only a couple blocks away um, you see uh, Aki standing outside um, awaiting any signs of your arrival when she spots you head in that direction she dips inside and soon after Hatsuo uh, steps out he looks very concerned and heads over to Makiko and immediately bows deeply Magistrate Sama are you alright? I am injured but I am still alive Hey, what can I do? I need some bandaging and some healing. I these four here they will Aki will accompany. Hi. I must be behind for now. Hi. He looks at you. Should I go in your stead? And Minkiko shakes her. No, I need you here. Hey! He bows and um, looks for permission to help you inside. He would never dare touch you without some sort of prompting to do so. Makiko doesn't look for assistance. She just walks inside and she quickly speaks to Aki to assist the four, again, four travelers to guide them around the city. And with that, Hatsuo and Makiko um, step inside the magistrate's office again. Um, and they're going to do what they're going to do. Uh, so that leaves Aki out with the rest of you. What is your next move? Katsuyori would look to uh, Onozaki and the others. I remember where the leader of the Kabukimono was resting his head. I do not think that he knows we know where he lives. I would say we check there first. Speak with him. And depending on what we find, that determines our next move. If we do not find him... If someone is pretending to be Oda Nobunaga, then rightfully what we must do is go to Onoji. Uh, Onozaki nods, but he's like watching the uh, the people moving around in the streets and stuff. If uh, is there like many people come out now? They're not all hiding away. Um, they mostly scattered as you came outside, but definitely your activities in the tea house um, made a stir. But um, you know, peasants know to keep their eyes down and keep to their own business. And uh, so he's like watching them as as uh, Katsuyori is speaking, and uh, and he nods in agreement, and then he looks towards them all and says uh, in a kind of a hushed tone uh, perhaps we should that Mikiko was victorious over this evil perhaps it will help do you mean telling the peasants that she was victorious. I. There is too much unrest lately. Yeah, these criminals. Oh. So. The problem on Ozaki san is that we have not captured victory. We took out one pawn in what appears to be a large game. You are right. Perhaps it is too soon. He 
looks to the others too, uh, if, uh, if they mention, if they're gonna mention anything, or if they have any response about it. Um, Mitsu sort of nods thoughtfully, but doesn't really add anything. And Father Faustino, he's um, fidgeting, and he's he's kind of putting things away that don't need to be put away, and he's readjusting the straps on his uh, leather satchel that don't need readjust. He's kind of uh, fidgeting and, and passing the time. Um, and you know, as he looks over to him uh, to get their thoughts on the idea, he he realizes uh, that uh, you know, he's he's being watched or looked at, and he raises his head up and oh oh well, I, I am here for one purpose and really one purpose only. This is all well beyond anything I expected. But if I were to show cowardice now and leave, I, I honestly don't know that Makiko would go through with the purchase. I don't know that she would accept my wares and then my reason for being here, well, it would kind of fall to the wayside. I think there's a bigger plan there's something else happening, and for some reason, I am a part of it now. Yes, I need to stay in her good graces, but as well, I need to follow this through and see what my Lord has intended for me. I'm here, and I'm with you. Not that I really want to be, and he smirks just a little bit, but I'm here. And I'll stay at your side. And, uh... Kind of... Smiles to Faustino. Father Faustino. You have done well so far. And... You are not afraid to raise your rifle. Uh, when the time came... He gets a big grin on his face and laughs a little bit when you say that. I said, raising it is the easy part. Hitting the target, well, <laughs> that's where I need a little more intervention from my lord. And uh, Onozaki then looks over to regard the little one and... Uh, Aki-chan, are you ready? Hi. Where do you need to go? Samoy san. Samoy. There was a house down the street from the tea house being used by the Kabuki Mono. We will go there first. Hey, follow me. And Aki, if you're all following, starts making their way down the streets. Uh, well, not whining between people as they're all clearing the way fairly effectively. Yeah, anybody who you pass immediately pulls off the street and bows deeply seeing the samurai there. Um, and you get closer. One sec. You walk down the street and there is a house off the side of the road. Um, without Aki there or someone that knows any better, you would not know any different. Um, this house from any other. You 
you see that it's, there's a slight platform to go up in there, and the Soshi screen for the main entrance appears to be ajar, from what you can tell. It is midday or so, um, so... Uh, it's not that uh, surprising um, if someone was about... Yeah, he cuts you, he looks around, and... Mm. We must be cautious. In case there is another entrance, one of us should watch their back. Hi. I will go around back. And, uh, Onizaki... Uh, takes the, uh, the big blade. It's to move around back. Not trying to be quiet at all, just... Uh, Aki... Looking for any other entrance. Sorry. Uh, Aki looks to... Katsu. Semai-sama, if you would like me to... Check around the perimeter... I can see if there's any activity. He looks at her and considers. And... Yes, but be careful. I said that I would keep you safe. I do not intend to break promises to Makiko-san. Hi. And Aki is going to go the opposite direction of Onozaki, and she's going to sneak her way around. Father Faustino, Mr. Taka, follow with me. Hi. And as you say his name, you you he looks up and uh, you see that he's already uh, loading his rifle. Yeah, why don't uh, Aki and Onazaki give me a uh, perception roll? my ears you don't hear anything or see anything just yet yeah um, Onozaki's slowly walking around the side with his blades in hand and uh, just scanning the windows or any if if there's any windows out there yeah there's not really windows right they're just uh, everything's screened up um, if they want to let air in, they just open the the screens. Everything's shut currently. Katsuyori will uh, not draw his blade right away. He will just keep it um, keep it sheathed, but we'll keep a hand on it as he walks to the front door of the the home. Yeah, and that door is actually ajar. So let me. Uh... So like something like that. Um, can you give me? Are you just going up there, like with no no regard for silence, ghost? Yeah, he's actually gonna call out because I believe uh, mm -hmm. the Kabuki Mono's leader was Hinotaro. Correct. And uh, he would, as he gets to the door, he'll call in Hinotaro. I am Takumoto Katsuyori, Samurai. I seek no further quarrel with you. I only wish to speak. I am coming in. If you attempt to strike at me, I will not hesitate. He'll look around in before he enters. Yeah, you see someone sitting at a on the ground at a table um, off to your left, kind of, um, and left and forward um, so you do see Hino Toro there he's got a you you didn't actually see him in the temple 
um, he had he has a very wild mane of hair, just incredibly big, um, and a large beard. He you can tell actually give why don't you give me a um hmm do a uh hmm, let's see yeah go ahead and just do perception. Yeah, you see one thing that's obvious is he's um, got a bottle of sake, which he is drinking out of. Oh, Samurai Sama, you come now, huh? What is it you want from Hinotaro-san, huh? Information. And, uh, without being invited in, he's is looking around, but approaches. Does not sit. He looks up at you. He sneers a bit. Well, Hinotaro is here. You ask the question. Do you want some sake? Now is not a time for me to drink sake. Looks around again. You have been working with the woman at the tea house. I want to know what you know of their dealings. <laughs> working? I have not been working with the woman. She does tell me what to do and I do it. But I saw what happened. I am, he takes a drink, even more scared than where I was before. Hmm. When did you start working for Shinchu? <laughs> I see. One, two. Each knee, son, she. Go f five months. And what you saw, have you ever seen her that way before? He frowns and shakes his head very slowly. Hmm. Are there any others that she spoke with? People who looked important? Uh, she used everyone. Ita. Yeah. Kabukimono. The Budoka of the Magistrate. Tch, the only ones that she did not infect, I think, was Hatsuo. That old fool. Even Makiko. She worked as a geisha. Yeah, Katsuyori frowns. And... You remember no others? No one who you do not see often? No one strange? <laughs> he just shakes his head. You can tell there might be... Well, give me give me a detect of lies, actually. Why don't you do that? Oh, since I'm standing in there, can I do yeah, that Yeah, well? uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anybody can. There's a door where you are at, Onozaki. The, 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 it's closed. It's under empathy. Yeah, Onozaki will open it quietly. Yeah, you begin to slide it open. One sec. <laughs> the scene switches slightly as Onozaki pulls the screen open. Um, 
It doesn't see anyone in this room. And um, he motions to Aki or just to be quiet. Not really trying to give her position away or anything, but he, uh, and then he heads inside. Around with his blade in his hand. There's another screen to your left. Aki peeks their head in, looking inside. Well, slide quietly. You want to give me a stealth roll, Onazaki? Sure. Yeah, you walk in there and... Are you opening this door? Is that what you said you're doing? Yeah, he's slowly yeah. going to slide it. Uh, you slide it open in one sec. Um, you see um, two men uh, in that room. They're sitting across from each other at a table. You notice they have something in their hands and... You're kind of shocked as one reaches across the table and cuts a slow cut across the other one's cheek. He doesn't yell out in pain. And then the other one, the one that was cut, does the same to the uh, one that had cut him. And they don't even seem to realize you're there. As the scene switch backs to Cassiori and uh, Father Festino, uh, all speaking. And upon hearing that from Father Festino, Cassiori nods and. You know, Toro, I am informed by my associate that you are not being completely honest with me. If even a gaijin can see through your thinly veiled half truce you must know you cannot keep up a charade. I did not come here for combat. I did not even come here to arrest you, though I would be within my right for executing you. But I will have honesty. <laughs> well, you know about the child? Yes, Makiko-san's child, I am aware. Aye, aye. Well, it is... I know that Shinju wished to take the child to Honoji. And the moon is full. She said it was in... He looks at his fingers and begins counting. Three days. Three days until what? He shakes his head. I do not know. Something bad, I would think. The child was here only yesterday. Yeah, and Katsuyori scowls and is thinking he had he had intended to come to this place a day or two ago. But when they found Makiko's son, they fled. He kind of internally berates himself for not taking action, but keeps composure. <laughs> he lets his hand go off of his, uh, the handle of his blade. That is all I wished. I would suggest keeping your head down. You are still one who is not welcome here. And Makiko-san, when she is well, will be certain to take your head if you continue to cause trouble. I... I will be leaving this place immediately. I will find another lord to fight for. If that is true, 
And I wish you are successful in your redemption. He just takes another big pull off the bottle. He turns and begins to exit. The three of you turn and the scene switches back to Onozaki. What are you doing as you're witnessing this? Uh, Onozaki pauses for a moment to, you know, kind of regard what they're doing and uh, looks to Aki uh, to make sure she is safe. Yeah, she's just and, standing uh, at the doorway. And uh, he will he will ask her, do you know these two? Mm, she kind of sneaks up and looks under Onozaki's arm to look at the Kabuki Mono inside. I mean, you know of them. You've seen them around. You know they're a Kabuki Mono. That's about it. Um, do I know of the ritual that they're doing? No, you've never seen anything like this. And they just keep... As you're as you're whispering to each other, just keep going across the table and cutting each other. Sometimes in the face, sometimes in the arm, the shoulder, everything that wouldn't actually kill them. Mm. Neither of you have Aki. seen anything like this ever. Okay, it looks up to Onozaki. They are kabuki mono for sure, but. I am unsure as to what they are doing. Onozaki is going to... Uh, uh, he's, he keeps staring at them while they're doing this, and he says, uh, uh, Go and fetch the others. Hi. Aki, very... Carefully, very quietly, sneaks out the back, and then hustles to the front as she as quietly and quickly as she can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you come around the front uh, with no issue, and you see the other three exiting. Aki looks up to Katsuyori as he comes out. Samai-sama. Hmm. Onozaki-sama is uh, in behind the building. There are two kabuki mono who seem to be cutting each other almost ritualistically. He said to come and tell you. Hmm. He looks at um, the father in Bujun. He thinks on it. Has he ever heard of anything like that? You can go ahead and give me a lore if you want. It's under knowledge. Mm -mm. No. Try that as well. Sure. Anyone can. Yeah, he would pose the question to the others and away from the door a bit. Have either of you heard of such a thing? I might have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Father Festino, you've done a lot of research. Um, into the Japanese culture um, and you're unsure at first and then I'm whispering because it's always better to hear from you And now we all kill ourselves because the gaijin knows war better than we do. <laughs> 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 
I try to avoid the blood magic sides of it. <laughs> Whatever the fuck is going on. So, uh, Father Fastino, um, he he kind of squints his eyes and furrows his brow. He says, I don't know exactly what it is those men are, are doing, but there are similar stories. It might have something to do with, with them. Um, I've studied a lot of the different cultures, uh, especially in regards to the spiritual, only because it is, of course, in my field of expertise, uh, the reason I came here. But if, if, if I do remember my studies correctly, there were instances of, of similar acts done by people who, who did this. They had been tainted by what you call the Oni. And then once the person or the Oni who had tainted them with their foulness, with their dark magic, had deceased, died, been killed, once that Oni was gone, then the spirits in these men became rotten, and they did this to themselves. Self-mutilation, sometimes even sacrificial. I, I, I read it all as just savage, heathen spiritualism, but... I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's what these men are doing, but it does sound similar. And he obviously looks upset. Hmm. Cassio nods and seems to have an appreciation for that knowledge. And you have an interesting take on it, Gaijin. I will accept this as truth, but if two kabuki mono are going to mutilate each other to death and sacrifice themselves, it is of no concern of mine. Go and collect Onozaki, Aki. Hey! Mm, Aki quickly hey. runs around the back. Father Faustino, he, he bows to you when you say that, and at the same time he says, your word, of course, is our order, but if these men know anything, if they were under the influence of the woman back at the temple, they might know something that we can use. Would they not? I would expect they would not know more than their leader does. We have just spoken with him. And they will be of no trouble to us, as it sounds as though they may kill themselves. I do not care for the lives of Kabuki Mono. And Father Fastino just uh, gives a, a short nod, half bow. Of course... Uh, Onizaki is going to step into the room mm -hmm. before anybody comes back. Yeah, you step into the room as this conversation is going on. The kap Kabuki Mono don't seem to notice you, even as you get closer. They just keep cutting and cutting and cutting. And you notice they aren't huge cuts, but enough to, I mean, that would easily scar a man. And, um, he notices, like, this ritual and, um, uh, was uh, was my role enough to give me a hint of, of what that might be? Or? Uh, what was your role? An eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, yeah, you, you're not sure. This is it would be a very difficult role. Um, okay. Uh, and he's still like looking for the boy at this point because he doesn't know. Yeah, there's no child in here. That's clear. Um, there is a side door here, um, right there. But and he'll peek. Yeah, he, I'll, I'll just peek in there. Um, yeah, the do the door's ajar. You can see in there. There's you don't see anything in there. Okay. 
And then he will back away from those two and let them do their thing. Yeah, and at that time, Aki comes in. Aki comes around the back and looks to uh, almost. Samurai-sama, Katsuyori-sama called me to come and get you. We are to depart. And he nods to her. Um, okay with leaving. Leaving these two to cut themselves up. <laughs> Very strange. It is some sort of infection of the soul. You all uh, walk around to the front. Um, where would you... Uh, go ahead and have a conversation if you're going to, and let's figure out where you're going to go now. Hmm. So... I believe our destination is Honoji. Unless any of you have any other concerns we should investigate. I was unable to find any clues to where the boy is, but there are two, I believe, Ronan in the back, cutting themselves. We spoke with Hinotaro. It seems clear that some foul ritual was meant to take place in Honoji involving Makiko-san's child. That is where the source of our despair arrests. As for the Kabuki Mono, he just kind of waves his hand. Trash is as trash does. If they <laughs> die, so be it. Let him kill each other. Hi. Would you, Father, your opinions are valued in this circumstance to Onoji or elsewhere? Uh, Father Fastino, he just looks and uh, smiles. I am here simply to serve. You lead the way and I will follow. Katsunori mm, nods and looks to Mitsu. Alright. And to Onoji. Aki, please. Hi. It is not a place that many would go, mm. of course, since the incident, but I will lead you there. If you are fearful, take us as close as you are willing to go, Aki chan. And then you may leave, if you wish. Thank you, Samurai Sama, but I will lead you there. It is my sworn duty. I will not abandon it. As you wish. Give me like uh, two or three minutes here. Uh, maybe Raven can figure out his audio stuff. Okay, I'll be right back then. I want to get some more coffee. Oh man, he's a madman. Coffee at 920? <laughs> mm-hmm. Fucking mad lad. I do that too, man. I had Great. one at like 4 o'clock and I felt mega dangerous. Amped up. Yeah. Yeah, it affects my wife really bad, like, even just a soda. She starts doing old routine day shit, doing backflips. Uh, the uh, jittery, not a cool type of energy, you Ooh. know? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I fucked around with um, one of those five-hour energies when oh, I was working yeah, at... Yeah. Uh, I was working, so it wasn't. I, I took. I had one when I was working at USA, so it was fine. I fucked around with one when I was working at uh, at Goodwill, and uh, 
I was spazzing out, and that was a day I was down inside the trash compactor cleaning it out, and that was uh, terrifying. Yeah, a five-hour energy is really... If I... Like, caffeine doesn't affect me, like, at all. Um, but five-hour energies, holy shit. It's weird. Like, a lot of times I can drink a coffee and fall asleep. Yeah, me too. I think it has to do with how much I drink of it, though. You build a tolerance after yeah. a while. Like, it's like any mm -hmm. <laughs> performance enhancer. Mm -hmm. I don't know what uh, kind of performance that a five-hour energy would enhance, but I... awareness. I I knew it. I knew it. It's good. Dude, I was. I, I don't know, man. It's not good for fitness. It's, it's, oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> um, but no, I was I was fucking amped, dude. Because uh, at that job, I was the I was the official manlet of the of the staff. So I was like, that was the shortest one. So I would always get um, trash compactor, dude, if we're having trouble with it, which is like crawling around behind the machine mechanisms and shit. Like, I was not qualified to do any of that work they had me down there doing. <laughs> and it's it's like pitch black. It's like you're in a crawl space. And so I was down there amped on five hour energy. Um, and so I was jittery and I was like fucking greasing up the uh, pistons and moving up and shit. They had, it was completely turned off. So I was not afraid of like getting crushed. But. Um, it was still spooky because I had to go like I had to turn sideways to go through like the very back portion where the actual like crusher is because it was too it was too small for you to go in by shoulders so I'm a broad shouldered midget and um, there was this big fucking spider that lived down there that I just never had the heart to crush because he's probably been alive longer down there than I've been working there so I just <laughs> I just let him be because he was a big dude. <laughs> I don't know what kind of spider he was. He was a big... He was, like, as big as my hand. I don't know what, what it was, but I was, I was not fucking with it. And, like... Spider had a corner office. And... Yeah, no, ex exactly. He he had what equated to a window seat, and I was a new employee. He wasn't having any of my shit. <laughs> um, but this motherfucker... Uh, he was propped up in a corner right where you had to turn your back to him to go back. <laughs> and so I was like, ooh... <laughs> And it, it was it was just that one day I was amped, and so I went to turn, and like I had the flashlight on. I'm like, dude, just uh, I, I actually spoke to this motherfucker. I was like, all right, just leave me be. Yeah. I just all I want to do is go back up, finish my shift. I don't mean you no harm. Just eat those eat those rats that are dead down here. Nice. And so I turned my back on him, and I, I checked one more time, and he was gone. And I yeah. fucked that. That was the fastest I've ever moved through that crawl space. Nope. No, nice. no, no. Fuck all that shit. <laughs> Rolling around like you're on fire. People are thinking you're crazy. Yeah. I, I came out and just fucking, like, was... I spazzed, man. Like, normally I let, I let someone help me out that's around there. I was like, hey, cause give me... Because I gotta, like... You have to, like, grip and, like, yank yourself up. Because it's like, it's like a, you know, 8 to 10 foot drop. And I'm not a big guy, so I had to reach up and pull myself up. But I fucking basically jumped out of that fucking hole. <laughs> was not having it. All right. I think everybody's back. All right. Um, you approach Honoji. Um, it's always in the distance. It's a large uh, Buddhist temple. However, most of it's been reduced to rubble. Um, unlike this picture, half of it is collapsed in parts um, there's these smaller temples that uh, flank it on each side and you pass them. You still smell the ash in the air as uh, you burn, you know, pass burned husks of, of wood and buildings. Um, you pass areas and notice bits and pieces of armor lying about that weren't collected or that were hidden in the brush. Um, you see um, a weapon or two. Not a katana, but other things that remind you that this place was certainly a battlefield. Um, and it seems almost as if the air and this, this air is like oppressive around you, which you smell the air, or the, I'm sorry, the sky seems to turn just a bit darker as if 
this place was foreboding. It gives you all a sense of unease. Katsuyori draws steel and is unabashed about it. In this place, I feel wrongly about it. Everyone should make ready. Aki takes out their small blade, looks around. This place is. Very much cloaked in death and darkness. He has his weapon out in his hand as well and cautiously moving through the area, the ashes, and quietly scanning. sick on that yeah you walk up a path and you finally find um, the stairs up to the main temple area the shrine uh, you see scorch marks and uh, wreckage about you at the same time there's you know, very, very, um, um, but plants of very vivid colors of the purple cherry blossoms and ferns and that sort of thing, as this was the place that Nabunaga would go to enjoy himself and rest, um, in the tranquility of this place, which has been marred forever. And, uh, it's up these stairs is where we're headed here. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, Onizaki will take the point and he'll, uh, kind of looks back towards the others and, um, just as in old battlefields, many spirits spoke. Aki-chan, follow us, if you do not want to. No. I will... I will venture with the four of you. Everyone step with caution. Hi. As you get to the top of the stairs, you can see inside the main pavilion, you see just it's burnt and rubbles just falling all about. Um, you don't see anything um, that you would not expect. Um, once you get right about there, hold up for me one second. You think you see a um, movement of some kind? Someone walk by? Um, they're just walking across this way, you kind of see. Yeah. Onozaki will point it out. Uh, I see movement. There should not be anyone up here. Hmm. Go in, uh, Katsuyori's looking around to see if anything seems like it shows recent use, or... 
go ahead. Where... Go ahead and give me like a uh, survival roll. Yeah, and can can Onozaki check maybe like the tracks of the ashes and see if there's any? Yeah, survival roll would be fine. Father Festino is just wide-eyed. He's got beads of perspiration on his forehead as he's just looking around, holding onto his rifle. He's kind of mumbling the Lord's Prayer under his breath. Mm, there are tracks about. People have been here recently. Oh, is it um do we know do we know like how how old Makiko's son is or if he's like a little one or um she called it a babe um the tracks are definitely far bigger than that and you don't think the child would um be walking that that was the sense that you got probably okay um, hopefully. We will find him here before any type of dark ritual takes place. And Onozaki starts to move forward, um, kind of in a rush, hopefully to find find the child, uh, his weapon in both his hands, guiding his way. Yeah, they, they appear to be someone's footprints. Yeah, you you just see the same kind of things. It's just ashen and and uh, rubble everywhere around you at this point. Um, but you do hear um, maybe footsteps. You're not sure. Yeah, upon hearing the footsteps, uh, Katsuyura will stop and put his hand out, uh, signaling everybody else to hold. Does Father Faustino have his his weapon ready? His rifle out? Oh yeah, he's he's had it just like loaded and out since. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's very and, nervous now. <laughs> and uh, Arazaki looks to Katsuyori. Perhaps I can draw them out. Let us see what comes first. He moves up a few more steps and uh, peeks around the corner, kind of looking down the hallways of this place. You see kind of up on a pavilion above you a bit, there's a man, very pale, um, something wrong with his eyes. You're not sure what he's doing um, up there. Um, this is a ledge right here before you, right? Um, it's not particularly high. It's probably three or four feet high. You could easily climb it. Um, he doesn't seem to be paying you any attention, but you do notice that his eyes look up and as they open... Um, they're extremely bloodshot and bigger than what you'd expect. Just like they're bulging. But he looks back to whatever he's doing. He's like basically fiddling with something in his hands. Um, Kaiser will look at Onozaki confused and then call out you there hold for a moment uh, he does not respond to you mm -hmm. 
perhaps this is another spirit. It has not attacked us. Let us approach it with caution. Onizaki will kind of move to the side this time, aware that uh, Faustino has the rifle and uh, trying to give him a clear shot if anything might happen. Uh, you said we could climb up this right here? Yeah, you can climb up it. As you approach, he turns to you and says, Yo, you're here for... You're here too early. You bring the one. He looks, turns his head sideways. Unnaturally far. Like almost <laughs> past his shoulder. What one? The one that brings his lord back to live again. Onizaki looks over Katsuyori and then back towards the servant. The child. Hi, the child. Have it. He looks very confused for a moment. Katsuyori thinks for a moment and kind of puts two and two together. Ah, and he looks at uh, Onozaki and the others. Yes, we are supposed to bring the child. Tell us again, where were we to go to collect it? We have seemed to forgot our way. He just shakes his head. You must now submit to the spirit of our master, and he shall judge you worthy if you have come here with not his prize. Come. Servant, who is your master? He, his eyes, he shakes his head. My master is the master of all, the true shogun of Japan. You not know who my master is? He frowns. Apologies, I spoke out of turn. It has been an off day. Please, lead on. He nods and begins this way. He waits for you to follow him at this point. Be prepared for any madness. And Father Festino has the rifle half raised already, uh, looking wide eyed all around him. He, he, he just keeps looking over his shoulders. Um, very nervous. Perhaps we could kill this one and wait for them to bring the child here. Katsuyori contemplates scratching his chin. Perhaps. Mm, he looks at Onosaki and. <sighs> you know, Taro said it would be three days. That is what Shinja said to him a ritual of a moonlight. But three days from when? Onizaki follows the uh, the servant. 
There's the blade still leading the way. Father Faustino's following close to you guys. Sticking by your side. Yeah, he um he goes down these stairs and then begins up. And then he turns around this corner and you lose sight of him briefly, you're not sure. Uh, Onozaki's going to try to uh, see if there's like anyone else maybe in hiding around uh, any of these You can rooms. roll perception roll if you would like. And there's blood on the floor. Yep, there. you see blood on the floor. It's pretty fresh. <laughs> but you don't see anybody. Man, that was a horrible roll. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, Aki's going to keep eyes out as well, seeing if, or in the ears too, seeing if they can hear or see anything. Yeah, you can go roll perception if you'd like. He probably doesn't, with that roll sucking so bad, he probably doesn't even see the blood. Maybe like he steps in it and slips or something. And... Yeah, you just <sighs> step on it and see it on your foot. Yeah, Aki, you don't see anything either. blood on the floor is it enough to uh, show that somebody died here or mm. maybe just it looks weird? it looks like um you you wouldn't be sure it's definitely fresh enough a couple days it's not totally dried so maybe not even a day Yeah. Um, Mitsutaka, you're pretty sure that nobody's around you. That you, But you hear the distant footsteps still. Like the servant's still walking. But as Onozaki, you turn the corner, you don't see him. This spirit might be leading us into a trap. Or in circles. They could have caused this and they gesture to the blood smears on the floor and the furniture. We must simply be ready for anything. But I agree with Onozaki san. Perhaps we should strike down this spirit if we see him again. this room and kind of uh, observe it, try to anyway, a little more clearly before moving in. Thinking there might be some trap or something ahead. You don't see anything in this room, which is a large, large room. Um, you do see that there is um, a Dashio stand over there. Um, but you're, yeah, you turn and kind of look and you just see a man kneeling on the ground. Um, you, you notice that his, commo a couple strange things. Number one, his face looks very peculiar. It looks like he has a mempo on, which is a mask, right, that goes with uh, armored helmets. But it looks like. It's made of flesh. His hair is black and pulled back off his head and it's almost wild. It just sticks up in random, you know, random ways, not as if as if it was just totally unruly. It was very strange for a place like this. The next thing is his kimono is pulled open 
and you see across his belly a gaping wound. Mm. Like he committed seppuku or something? Maybe. He's looking straight yeah, at you. Uh, yeah, Father Festino, he's uh, he's uh, almost shaking. He he can't believe what he's seeing. Uh, he reaches for the rosary around his neck. Find your courage, Gaijin. <sighs> if it will help, know that... Even I am not without fear. He looks at the strange looking man. Well, Azaki san, we should approach this one with caution. And Onazaki's worried, definitely got definitely afraid, so he's in a in a stance with his blade above his head at this point kind of like inching his way towards this guy uh, feet over feet you know moving across the room and uh, uh, he kind of breaks the whole the whole ruse there uh, he he just states plainly um, oh, where is the child The man, it takes a moment for him to respond, but eventually his head tilts up and he looks at you. He blinks a few times. The child is mine. You have not brought the child to me. Why do you interrupt me? I have awoken too soon. Mm -hmm. He looks to Onozaki and he's going to try to backstep it a bit. Uh, apologies for this interruption. But the one who told us where to find the child gave us poor direction. We ask for the direction so we may retrieve your prize adequately. You tell me that... My vessel is lost. You come here and ask me. No one will tell you that. My life, my essence, is known but to one. He slowly stands up. And Katsuyori's hand goes back to his sword handle. We are talking adequately here now. There is no need for you to draw steel. Only guidance is needed. And you shall have the vessel you seek. He chuckles. This laughs. It almost rings in your ears as malevolent. <laughs> what is your name? I am Tokumoru Katsuyori, and I would have yours as well. He nods his head slightly. I, you do deserve such a thing. I am called... And he pauses as if he's thinking what his name is. Ah, yes. Oda Nabunaga. <laughs> Takumaru laughs. I see. So you're the one who takes the name of a dead man. I am the dead man. And he draws both his wakizashi and katana with both hands, holding them side by side. He takes a step forward, and something 
terrible happens. Ooh, who did we lose? Oh, shoot. So if we limit the number of users, we can prevent any... Oh, I don't care. I don't care. I don't think anybody will jump in. If they do. Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> sure. I could... I could pr <clears throat> hold on. <coughs> Jesus. Um, I can do a permission on it. I can put... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Eh, fuck it. If they jump in, we'll figure it out. I don't think anybody will. Just need a raven. And, and rogue. Oh, and rogue, yeah. Now put that to bed. Until they all jump in yeah. now. It's going in. <laughs> <laughs> And you get booted from the whole server. <laughs> All right. So what did you teach anyone? Yeah, what did That's you guys cool. last hear? He took a step forward and crashed the entire Discord okay. with his presence. Yes, he's that. <laughs> like in New Moon Dog is just yeah. like nah, man. Yeah, okay. Um, everybody here, just make sure. Doc, Raven, Rogue. Okay. Yeah. Rogue. Okay. So he steps forward. Um, he draws his katana and wakazashi. As he does so, in the same motion, his entrails spill out of his belly onto the floor at his feet. And he looks down and smiles at you. What are your reactions? Uh, Onazaki like looks over wide eyed to Katsuyori and uh, his blade is, is still in the high position. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and he says, uh, This one must live no more. Oh, man. Um, can everybody who witnessed that give me a courage roll? Oh, it was art. Haha. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> I didn't fix that, see? The intimidation. Oh, art! Look at my collection. Yeah, <laughs> look at my guts. <laughs> that's you more like it. Lots of guts to stay here. Hey, that's is it fucking not great it for is me. Courage, yes. Where willpower? Yeah, it's in willpower. We have the courage. Oh, what should do? I had my hands over my eyes because I was scared. Oh, <laughs> 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 see, Aki's at least slightly braver than the samurai. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, she do. Oh, lucky son. Oh, so everybody who failed, which is everybody besides Onozaki, takes a hardship if they attack Nobunaga. Yeah, Katsuyori's hand shakes a bit on the um, katana handle, but he tries to tighten it. No matter who this is, 
They will trouble this place no more. All right, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Let me make sure it's clear. Okay, it is. So go ahead. Oh. The um, Katsuyori, do you still have that scroll? Maybe he get a. Uh, he does. Oh yes, he does. Hold on. Um, that actually might help. I forget about that. Um, let me look at what it does again. Be seventy. What is that? That's what his initiative. Uh, he rolled like a boss. You see. Oh yeah, oh, just look at the roll. That's <laughs> nothing that I did. It's Holy just. Shit. Oh my god. Um, shit though. <laughs> shit though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shit oh priest. Oh no. Oh, boy. Get a oh, explosion. Honey. Yeah, this is definitely supposed to... Oh, you're immune from fear from Oni, so you're good. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Actually, let me... Nice. I can just show that to you. You can see. I'm also trash. Oh, you can't see the... Hold on. You're not scared, but you hold your... Uh, I, ro I rolled with a hardship, so I have four, technically. But Why do you have a hardship? Uh, I, I, I put the hardship in because it was um, before you told me the... The oh, oh, the hardships just attacks on him anyway. Oh, it's a four then anyway. Okay. okay. Uh, has everybody rolled there? All right. Oh, I haven't rolled. Yeah, so. you good. But do do I get the hardship because I don't care? No, you about... don't get a hardship. Okay. Uh... okay, understood. Oh, God. Uh oh. Is everybody still here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, rolling initiative for some other things here. Oh. Um, Nabuna Nabunaga is going to do a, um, readied action. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Um, as, as you're waiting, there's, you see something come around the corner. It looks like, um, a scaled man and, uh, he has in his hand a um what is it exactly i think it's a yeah a huge club an ono he's just slowly stalking around he's like hunched over a bit um and uh let's see this guy's going to run oh he can't run that's right Sorry, hold on, let's do that again. So this guy, you kind of hear more footsteps as well. Um, <sighs> yeah, you hear people coming. My Kiko, we might be uh, in trouble. Onozaki, oh, you're up. Um, into, uh, if I take two steps here, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's an attack. That yeah, you can't attack. Um, you can take two steps and move and then you'll be able to attack before him, but you can't attack right away. Okay. I'll do okay, that. Go ahead and see if you give yourself two AP. And uh, he is going to say, um, uh, he's going to try to say, he doesn't really see that other guy, mm -hmm. but he's going to say, uh, 
Uh, Aki. Flee. Fetch my Kiko. Aki. Even though that's yeah, probably like... not gonna happen. <laughs> no. Um, you guys see something like pass through the wall. Ugh. It looks like a ghost, essentially. Katsuyori, you're up. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I guess we'll deal with the, uh, the root of the problem, or attempt to. So, I will, uh, move in here. I don't think I can attack right away. I can't charge a distance of two, so Correct. I'll move in to engage with quote-unquote Oda Nobunaga, because Kasiyori is still having trouble processing. That's actually him. Okay, so it was two... And his held action was to attack anybody that came near. It'll be eight, so he's going to attack you. Oh, he's just going to do a normal attack. What is a dodge to do? Uh, well, you got to be to twenty-nine and a parry or a dodge. You can par You can parry. It uses your katana skill, whichever's better. I don't know which is better for you. Let me see. Dodge is definitely going to be better. Okay, that's just one AP to do that. Yeah, how does it look as you evade this blade? It swung very quickly towards your head. So, uh, stepping forward, he tries to read his opponent's body language and sees the shoulder twisting knowing that the strike is going to be on high so he quickly ducks his head and turns to the side a bit to let the blade skim across the top of his helmet yeah okay go ahead and give yourself one AP for that dodge Aki what are you doing Aki and knowing that if they try to escape they're probably going to get swiped at. Um, it's probably going to be more dangerous to attempt to slip out unless they can do some sort of stealth check to sneak out. You can do, you can but, do a stealth uh, check if you want. Yeah, sure. See if they can just kind of fade into the background. Mm, go ahead. Uh, sure. Uh... Um, with all the combat going on, I'll give that to you, actually. Mitsu tries to make a spectacle of himself to, to aid her escape. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father Faustino, I missed you in the order. Um, we can go after Aki. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Aki, you can you kind of are able to get out of there. Uh, how far can I get? You can or run 10 hexes. Yeah, they'll just kind of sneak by, uh, fading to the background and sneaking. Uh, oh, hell, that was not a good idea. <laughs> oh no! <gasps> so there goes Aki. <laughs> would Aki have gone that way, or would she have gone back the way we came? There's an exit over here. Yes, there is an exit over there. Um, so you go ahead and give yourself five AP and a run of five. Um, I need to grab something real quick. Uh, where did it go? I'm trying to edit it. Just your bubble. Aki wants right. to come back to me. I can't edit my bar. Uh, I can't. Uh, no. just pro I did. That's fine. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that music, yeah. You are... uh, Father Fristina, you're up. Um, seeing Aki go by him, seeing uh, Katsuyori uh, run towards whatever that thing is down there. Onosaki step off to the side of his peripheral vision. He looks and sees 
this thing coming around the corner, this man coming around the corner, and since he already has his rifle in hand, he just starts aiming at him. Okay. How many AP would you like to use? Uh, so, if you uh, just tip, uh, if you use four, you'll be able to still go before him. Then I will use... You Can you, can you see their AP menus, I hope? Yeah, okay. Five. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you're aiming for four. Cool. Um, okay. I believe it is Mitsutaka. Here he sees the father getting his apparatus ready. So Mitsu will move here and draw the Tonto from his sleeve. Okay. And he's ready and he doesn't know that it's going to do anything if the, the thing that came through the wall okay. comes after him, but he's going to try. All right, you do. Um, all right, I think everybody is good here. Um, all right, so uh, who has... Onazaki, you're up. He is going to attack uh, this one here. Okay. Just a straight attack, no aims or anything? Straight attack. Okay. With the, uh, no dodge. Okay. And I don't know if it matters, but I can't see Mitsutaka or Onazaki's uh, it could. Let me just fix it. Um, eh, oh, it's... It says visible to everyone. Can you see it now? Mitsutaka's? I can see Mitsutaka's okay. now, yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, 27. Yeah. So it's going to try to... Um, it, let me see. So you swing your Nodachi at this thing, and it's going to try to block it, I believe. Um... Yeah, it's unwieldy. That's what I thought. Okay, um, okay so it's going to try to. Mm, let me see what skills does it have. Yeah, it's just going to try to block. Um, Uh, was that a hit? What did you roll? 10? What's your damage? I rolled a 27. So 10 plus um, what's your damage on a Nodachi? 5. 15. Um, left arm. 12. It's armor. Yes. Four. Uh, you hit it for eight. That's uh, it gives it an injury. Of course, my AP. All right. So go ahead and add three to. The, hmm? Yeah. Go ahead. Doesn't the mortal property aggravate? Uh, the mortal property would give if he gives a wound. It gives a injury as well. So it oh, has to gotcha. it has to hit a wound too. Um, gotcha. That's how that works. Um, let's see. API is broke, of course. Uh, turn this thing off. It's token mod for some reason. I don't know. Uh, so who has? I think it's Ghost, right? The next yep. lowest. Uh, I would have spent one for a dodge and however many is for a move. So. Well, you, yeah, so I already did all that. So you had two for the move and then one for the mm -hmm. dodge. So you're at three. Okay. Yeah, I think you're next. All right. All right. Uh, just attacking sounds good. <laughs> uh, so I'll go ahead and just make a simple attack against the. Uh, okay. Against him, nothing reckless or anything yet. Okay. Uh, 
And I just need to take a look at the seal here. It's plus two benefits for system? Yes. Okay. Let me just copy paste that in to my thing. So I remember. That's it from that scroll? Yep. Yep. Nice. A 19. He's going to attempt to parry. He does. He knocks the blade aside um, rather quickly and deftly as you go back and forth. I think it's Mitsutaka's turn. Ozaki or himself. Okay. You can do a, a readied action if that's what you're looking to do. Yep. That's it. Okay. The readied action man. Okay. Um, okay. So who is at anybody below five beside uh, that spirits at four? And, and you. But you, uh, you, uh, let me see who's first on that. Um, it's first. So it does move towards you, Mitsutaka. Are you gonna. Th are you throwing your knife? Or are you gonna try to stab it or what? No, he's gonna try and stab okay, it. So it gets right here. Alright, then he will try to stab. He may try to stab. This probably won't go any better than the throwing it. Uh, it's, give yourself a benefit. Okay, if you already rolled, just go ahead and roll a d10 for me. It's got to be a 9 to matter, but... Okay. So, a 9. Um... Yeah. Um, that just auto misses it. Oh no, his base defense is six, so he has to actually try to avoid it. He's gonna dodge. That's a hit of <laughs> one. Uh, so your damage is actually um, bumped by two with this thing. So. Um, So it's six. Six damage plus what? Seven damage. Torso strike. Um, this thing, that's going to give it an injury. Now how does that look? Is this kind of partially formed spirit? It's definitely, as you hit it, you. it feels like a, a thing, a person. Well, I think more than, than seeing anything happened to the spirit it's the look of surprise on Mitsu's face <laughs> the, seems to have done anything to it yeah it like shrieks as you strike it Father Fastino you are up Father Fastino um, he's keeping his eye on this thing rounding the corner down the hall and he's going to hold his action and wait until it gets closer. He's just holding it, a slight nervous shake in his arms. But he keeps it held up to his eye, the rifle up to his eye. And he wants to he wants the thing to get just a little closer. 
Uh, once uh, he's going to do a holding mm. action until this thing comes to at least these steps. Okay. If it hits these steps, he's going to fire. Okay, that that makes sense. Um, uh, Makiko, can you roll initiative? Because everybody's at five now. I can't. The cavalry has arrived. Um, okay. Awesome. Um, I think, yeah, put you in there. Good. Um, so at five, Nabunaga's well above five. Uh, so it's this warrior that had struck, uh, been struck by Onazaki. It, like, rah, and swings, um, actually, it, uh, like, looks at you with this terrible, like, terrible gaze and screams, um, and it's going to try to do a ability called Terrible Gaze. Um, you need to roll me a Courage and Willpower. That's interesting. Guns. Whoops. Uh, it's versus a 14. Um, courage. Two separate or? Hmm? Uh, no, courage, courage slash willpower. It's the so that's a fail. Um, so you add. Is it possible to add a is a fate? Uh, you could uh, you can auto yeah you can burn your fate or you could spend it if you want to. Sp uh, there's no real reason to spend it at this point versus burn it, but um, you you could auto succeed with burning a fate point. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do that. Okay. So you gotta succeed. So, how does it just doesn't doesn't bother you? Um, you're used to uh, violent situations, and the it doesn't scare you at all. Yeah, he um, as he screams in his face, uh, uh, Onizaki uh, just screams back pretty much as a kind of a, a war cry Wah! and tries to uh, bring the blade at him kind of up underneath his chin okay when it's your turn you can um, it is now Makiko's turn alright Makiko she is going to run uh how far can she get? So you can go up to 10 hexes with a run. Yeah, just gonna go there and then six. And she's uh, got a hand on her weapon. She's quickly uh, just trying to catch up. Um. Oh, I'm assuming. <laughs> can I even squeeze through there? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. That's not sweet. Good, yeah. All right, that's uh, her okay. turn. So you're at ten now. Um, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, he's gonna move here. That guy moves there. Yeah, um, you can't, uh, well, actually nobody that knows who this guy is sees him, but Father Faustina, you see another person around the corner, um, and he actually, his face is covered in wounds and blood, just as if somebody had been cutting his face over and over and over again. Yeah, Father. I mean, Father Festina. As soon as he sees someone running up to him, especially someone covered in blood, uh, he fires. Um. Okay, that's fine. I'll let that. So from about right here. Oh wait, is is, uh, is it even my turn? No, you you have Overwatch. Well, not Overwatch. Technically, you're aiming at this guy, but you can. I'll let it. It's it's fine. You can shoot at this guy. Yeah, you're 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 um you have a held action, so I'm 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 basically 
aiming down this That's hall. fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so go ahead and you can shoot. It's a, This is a medium shot. And uh, you have four benefits on the shot. Eighteen. That's just a miss. Jeez. Is it medium? Yep. That seems a lot closer than medium, but no, four. It's a. Uh, well, I'll I'll say it's short. Go ahead and roll d10. No, that's good. That's good. That's what you want. That's what you want. Oh, yeah. really? All right. That, that, you can say it hits. Um, all right. Wait, a one? Yeah. That brings it to the No, no, that's right? not what it is. It's, um, it's your range TN. So the way range works in this game is you take their base defense score, and then based on the range band they're at, um, based on the range band they're at, at is how many d10s you add to that so if he's at medium if you look if you hover over the range tn it says 10 plus 2d10 right so if it was short range it's 10 plus 1d10 so um that's eight damage um so if you rolled a one that would be 11 so 17 um, plus eight, twenty-five. Um, that's gonna kill him. How does that? How does that look? Hits him in the head, by the way. So. Yeah, uh, Father Facino. He just has the uh, arquebus uh, pointed down this narrow hallway because uh, he saw that first guy coming running, waiting for him to get closer, and then this guy comes tearing around the corner and hits the stairs, and almost just out of out of reflex, uh, since he was already aiming down the hallway, while the Fascino just fires and just the, you know, thick wad of lead fires out of it and hits this guy in the head, crushing his skull, uh, knocking him back off of his feet, and he just splatters to the ground. Okay, uh, let's see, so, is that guy? Yeah. Passing through a wall on this side comes another ghostly apparition. And then... One, two, three... Charge. So this Cubby Kimono um, sees Aki and just charges her. With his sword drawn. Oh no! Oh, no. 14. What's Aki going to do? Um, it's a plus 5 to your defense. Yeah, they're going to try and dodge out of the way. Um, Whose idea was it to let those guys just hang out? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I gotta see if she's. I think she's trained in dodge. Uh. <laughs> yep. I plead the fifth. <laughs> oh yeah, and plus five. Oh yeah, but yeah, he just swings over your head. He's not used to attacking anything nearly so tall, obviously. But you lose your dodge. Aki rolls out of the way as the blade comes down. And just kind of looks up very fearfully. Onozaki, you're up. I am going to, uh... Normal attack. Okay. Um... Normal attack it is. Is there a fast attack? Quick, yes, uh... there is. There actually definitely is. Um, I believe it is called... Quick attack, I think. Um, let's see. 
System handouts, offensive techniques one. No, it must be in two. Rush, Rush attack, attack is a, a you take a hardship. Costs uh, less AP. So it's probably is it like two? It is. AP it is three two, yes. versus mm -hmm. versus uh, three. Try it out. That's uh, uh, so I'll do that and um. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's could not be a bad idea because it make you go. I don't know if he's well. I think you go before him anyway, but yeah. So just give yourself a hardship on your attack, because he does have a negative three to all his actions. All right, so fifteen. Why are you? Oh, that negative three is from unwieldy. Um, so he's going to try to block. Twenty. What did you roll? For? Yeah, he does block it. Um, but he's at nine now. Yeah, he's able to get his big club in the way, and it just your no dachi digs into it, but isn't able to get through. Um, one, two, three, four, five. What does control do uh, for Say, the? I remember applying. Uh, that control. To the so control weapon. makes it a negative three instead of a hardship for using an unwieldy weapon. Oh, okay. That's why you have a negative three to your roll. So that guy just walked in. Um, what is this guy's AP? I can't see six. Does anybody have five still? I don't think so. It looks like Katsuyori uh, does, doesn't he? He's, oh, he does have a six. You're up. Yep. Katsuyori, you're up. Actually, the spirit that's attacking um, Mitsutaka is up then, then Katsuyori. So it's just going to go real quick. It's going to use its special ability. <clears throat> Whale. Um, so... What's that do? Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's going to use that. Um, so this is going to be a vigil. I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. So, comment menu, whale. That oh, was terrible. Um, okay, so anybody within 2 AP of it needs to do a vigilance test so we're talking about Onozaki and Mitsutaka gotta be the seven yep Did you hear that, Raven? You got to do a uh, vigilance roll. Okay. Yep. Just yeah, I just here. didn't know if you could hear me or not. Yeah, untrained. This is going to go badly. Nope, you got it. Nope. So it just makes this, like, banshee-like scream, just the loudest thing you've ever heard. Um, but for whatever reason, it doesn't just does not bother you as bad as it should, perhaps. All right. Um, so, Katsuyori. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. He's going to continue to take this fight very carefully because if it is, if this actually is Oda Nobunaga, then it will be a serious opponent. So, um,. Uh, let's see. I think I might do a guarded attack. I believe that was something I saw here. Cautious attack. Yeah, cautious. Um, yeah, so I'll take a hardship, but I'm getting benefits anyway since it's since he's technically an only. So I'll probably I'll do a cautious attack for okay. three, and then I can gain a defensive benefit to my next defensive action. Um, Yeah. Okay, he 
he's going to try to parry. Uh, that's a hit. Oh, wait. What did you roll? Nice. Oh, it's no, not a hit. I thought you rolled a 22. Roll 22 too, yeah. So um, he parries. That puts him at 10. Uh, that puts you at 9. Um, and But you get... Um, you get that. We'll just... Okay, just remember that you have that next turn. Um, yeah, he's able to deflect it, but uh, you're being very cautious as you fight him. Um, all right, uh, Aki, you're up real quick. Um, Aki's going to do a cautious attack. And I think that's going to take a hardship on. This yeah, it's one. the same thing Ghost just did. Yeah. I'll put you at nine. Uh, he'll try to parry. Yeah, he's able to. He just knocks it down, just very nonchalantly as he looks down at you. Um, so I think seven is the lowest. Onazaki, is that you, I believe? Yeah. Okay. And this one's going to be at standard. Okay. Um, give me some love. Oh. Oh, boy. Okay. He's going to try to parry. Um, what did you roll? You wrote a 48, so it's a 26 plus a 5, 31, uh, minus 3, 28 to the arm. Um, okay, so that is, he's got to make a death roll on that one versus a 28. Where is it? There you go. Yes, it does. It slices off his left arm, but this creature doesn't. You know, it clearly hurts him. It screams out in pain, but it he doesn't fall over like most men would. So, yeah, Onizaki brings the blade up with that quick attack and um and as he slaps it out of the way um, he brings the blade back down as he shifts and takes the arm off and uh watching its reaction uh uh his eyes widen he shouts again to aki aki flee he's trying to make his way over towards <laughs> katsuyori but this thing will not die. All right. I think uh, the nines are up now. I'm just trying to see which ones. Uh, that would be the one. The one that you're facing off against does a reckless attack, um, knowing how hurt it is. How many benefits does that give me? Three, I think. Two should be okay. reckless. going to be very difficult. <laughs> nope, it is three. You were wrong. You were right. I was wrong. Uh, three. Thirteen. Against you, Onozaki. Block. You can just roll, you can you either roll your, um, just roll your swords is fine. Yeah, katana, or um, not your katana, your nodachi. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you block that. How does that look as it swings back on you? It's back across with his blade. Uh, uh, Ozaki just rotates it, uh, figure eight pattern in front of his body, parries it. 
Yeah, you can tell it's moving slower now. It has it has a hardship to its next defensive action too. Um, so the next person is this ghost thing. Um, it is actually going to move up here for two, and that that's its turn. And then, who else has nine? I do. Oh, who's, who, oh, yes, yes, Aki. yes, go ahead. Um, Aki, I don't know, let's see. Uh, I think I will try, because I cannot hit it. Um. Let's disengage. Uh, I think disengage is in defense. Uh, there is a defensive disengage now, but there's a there's an offensive disengage too, which would be more suitable for you right now. Yeah, it's probably the one I'm just trying to. And it's it's an it's in two. In. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Disengage. Off, it's just disengage. Design. Yeah. It's an offensive technique ah, too. Uh -huh. I need to alphabetize all that. But. Yes, it's okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Acrobatics so... agility is what you need. Okay. And I get a... I think I get a benefit from um, doing the cautious attack. Well, it's, that's, on, a that's on a defensive yeah. action. Ah, you're right. All right, well, I'm going to try anyway. Okay. Acrobatics agility. Uh, what's his is versus a senses... Perception. That's persuasion. Oh yeah, you're able to do it easy. <laughs> so Aki just tumbles out of there and um, is going to move five hexes yeah, and just kind of out the door. Yep. That just adds that many. Yeah, he tries to catch you, but you're just way too small for him. He's unable to get in front of you or do anything about it. Um, and I believe uh, Katsuyori, you are up again. Taking this one careful. Uh, trying to get a gauge for his opponent. It's going to be another guarded attack. Um, okay. Cautious attack. At least you're putting him on the defensive, increasing his AP spins. I'm just going to move plan. Aki in so I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you. Anything. Aki's basically out of the combat, I think. Yeah. Um, so he's going to try to parry again. He's fucking good, man. Yeah, you just swing and he just... He's barely able to keep it in your own... You're pretty shocked because it was a very good swing. Whatever this thing is in front of you is very skilled. Um, I think it's the tens now. I think it's Makiko. All right. I think I saw because I had vision of Aki and Makiko. <laughs> I thought this was like a way I could just bust. You can, in. you can jump down. It's fine. Okay, so I could run and jump in there. Uh, or you can just run through. Yeah, you, you could. That's fine. Alright, well, I'll run up seven hexes. I won't jump through just yet. Um, bust down the wall. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, she'll, she'll run the seven. Um, so, like, four yep. AP. Oh, I gotcha. Alright, um... I think it's uh, okay. So this Kabuki Mono actually goes after Aki very mindlessly, but um, he's not able to catch her, so he just kind of wanders off out there, following her. Um, okay, um, so he's kind of out of the picture for now. And Eleven's correct. Um, 
11 twos. Okay, so, so this Banshee right here is going to go. He's going to try to do his Banshee scream. Um, so here we go. Um, so, uh, Mitsutake and Father Faustino need to give me a, um, vigilance roll. Um, didn't you say within two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm three away mm, from that one. No, it's this one. It's the one right, right below you. Oh, I thought this one was the nine. Uh, so, oh, oh, he is a nine. I just haven't went with him, I guess. I, I did it with this guy, but I'll do the other guy next. I should just make him 11 too to make it easy, easier. Whatever. Yep, you're good. Those bastards. <laughs> um. Did that. So it's a 10 ver So it's a success. Him versus you. Um, so the damage is, I believe it's two, um, which I don't think is going to hurt you. Yeah, it's, it's two. Um, so basically, Father Faustino, you hear this ringing in your ears, but it's not quite enough to do anything to you because it doesn't, um, it's not over your injury threshold. So it's only two damage, which is not enough to do anything. Um, okay, so he's at 14. Um, who's the next guy? That guy's out the door. Festina's a 12. Uh, Onuzaki, you are up. Alright. He is going to try to take this guy out, hopefully. Uh, he's very, 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 very hurt. <laughs> And he reckless attack last time, so um, twenty-five. Um, so basically, that would be a eight minus. Yeah, he's it's like it's a negative one. Um, roll twenty can't do the math correctly on that, but um, so negative one. What did you roll? Uh, so it's 26, 31, minus 2, 28. Uh, that's another death roll for him. No, doesn't kill it. It's just like a shambling mound right now, barely able to stay up. But it, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking thing. That, that, uh, take his leg off or something, maybe? Yeah, we can just say it kills it, because it's, it's going to be unable to hit anything. It doesn't really matter. a flash yeah. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> I'm at worst. <laughs> oh, hold it, <laughs> How does that look as you kill it? <laughs> he goes back and rips the blade across, uh, its leg, uh, trying to uh, just walk away from it uh, and try to help his uh, Mitsutaka over there. Okay. That brings me yeah, up to 14. Yeah, you're at 14. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> so this one comes in um, one, two. Um, so he's unable to attack, actually, but he's at 12. Um, Mitsutaka, I believe you're up now. Alright, he will once again stab the one he's been engaged mm -hmm. with. You get two benefits on this roll. Oh lord. Is that correct? So he will burn. I... Uh. Yeah. Okay. 
what, what were you going to do? So he will burn a fate point to succeed on that strike. Um, I think for, for, since you, it would be just at the, um, okay, that's fine. Uh, let me, so you would have a, it would match whatever his defense is. So you do, uh, you would do six damage. Yeah, you might not want to, just to let you know, because, so if, if you did that way, um, if you did it that way, what would happen is, it would be, uh, you would match, so it would be a zero, and then you'd add your damage, which is six. Okay, so you'd have six, and then you subtract the three from levels of success, right? So it, would, it wouldn't it would even hurt him. It wouldn't be enough to hurt him. Okay, no point. Okay. Um, so that puts you at 14. And I believe... Uh, it is up now. It is going to try the whale again. Um, actually, it's just going to use its claws against you. A standard attack. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Wait. Um, why is it dropping to... Hold on. Sorry, something's wrong with that. Huh. <laughs> yes, Onazaki, that was exactly the thing you avoided, honestly. Oh god, thank you. Yeah. God. <laughs> um so it's a uh, let me let me re-roll that. I don't know what why it did that. I'm sorry. Um Strange. Yeah. So it's it's a th it's a. I think you have hit the head. Yeah. Nine. Okay. Versus a nine. Mitsutaka. Yeah, it swings a hand at you. You can try to, uh, you can parry it or you can dodge it. Uh, I think it's the same. So we'll try a parry. Okay. okay. I guess. That would be, that's just your weapon skill. Your small oh, okay. blades. So the Tonto or... Uh, it doesn't blades. matter. They both use the same skill. Yeah, you're able to block it. So that adds one to you. That's three to him. Okay, I believe it is the 12's turn, and I believe the top 12 is Father Festina, maybe? Yep. What would you like to do? Uh, this guy ran right up on him, so Father Festino, in, in surprise shock, has nothing else. Uh, his weapon isn't loaded. Uh, so he wields it like a club mm -hmm. and tries smacking this mm -hmm. guy. Go ahead and uh, give me a uh, bludgeon's roll. That's in strength. You're not going to have a macro for it. You have to roll off your sheet. Or, well, I mean, you will have a bludgeon's macro, but not a combat macro. Okay. Okay, um, it's going to dodge, or it's going to block, probably. Yeah, it just barely gets it up in time as you swing towards its head. Alright, um, Katsuyori. Actually, it's Nabunaga. Mm -hmm. 
It is going to do a... Too much shit up right now. Um, it's going to do a two-weapon attack. So it basically um, attacks with each weapon. Um, and he has an ability that lets him do it for one hardship instead of two. Well, here's the first attack. One hardship. So you did a guarded attack, so you get one benefit, is that, what was it, one for cautious attack? Yeah, so I get one for cautious attack. I don't know if I get the benefits for him being an Oni to any kind of Oh yes, rules. you would. You would get two. Okay, so three. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, if I roll to defend this one, then he gets to hit me with the second one, I don't get to defend it. No, you, you get to defend, defend yes. You'll be able to defend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to try to dodge them both. Um, well, you definitely dodged... You, you dodged the first one, for sure. 16. Um, so that puts you at... 13. Um, so he's going to attack with his Wakazashi. ranged. So ignore the range part of that. Uh, oh, I didn't give him a hardship either. Hold on, let me just redo that. Yeah, 13. Um, do I even need to roll against that? Because my base defense is then 14, you do not need to roll. No, nope. yep, he just whiffs. So it's kind of that one. He was just a little unprepared, perhaps. Um, okay, so we have one more thirteen left. I think uh, Katsuyori and this guy up here. So this thing is going to attack Father Festino now. It's going to use a reckless attack. Three benefits. Fifteen. Oh no. And I will try and dodge. You got this, Father Festino. Mm-hmm. Just with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God is <laughs> Oh no! Um, so that's thirteen. Um, yeah, that's enough to give you a wound. Um, it's a mortal weapon, so it's going to give you injury as well. Um, gives you a wound. Gives you an injury. Um, so how does it? How does it look as it just smashes across your chest? This big club. Father Festino, after swinging his rifle to try and hit this thing and missing, uh, was obviously off balance when it came back in and uh, hit him right across the chest. All right. Um, 14, or no, Katsuyori, you're up. 13. Ghost, are you muted? Oh, it was yeah, up for that. All right. Oh, I 
think he's going to try to go for more traditional attacks. Now he's got a good gauge with his opponent's strength, and he feels he can compete with it. So um, he drops his guard just a bit to go more on the offensive. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a reckless attack. It's going to try to do a defensive disarm. Um, so you did a reckless attack. That's four APs, correct? It is. Okay. Um, so that's two for him. So, all right. So let's see. Uh, okay. Here we go. So it's a hardship and a negative three. <sighs> yeah, he catches you right above the hilt. You understand what he was doing right at the last minute, and you're just lucky he just, just barely miscalculated hitting you in the hand. All right, cool. Um, all right, um, 14s, Makiko, it's Hi. you. All right, um, well, I guess for one, um, is it like, uh, one of those kind of paper walls? Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Makiko... She kind of cuts through it and then just jumps uh, right into the room, which I can't move myself into. Oh, I'll move you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. This Kool Aid man and going through there. Okay. Yeah, you just all you see is just the slit come up, uh, come up the wall, and then Makiko busts through as she uh, she wields her blade and she just swings it around and looks at the yokai. Looks to the other. Good! You're still standing! Yeah. So, you could do a lunge from where you were, right? Because you have Ooh. range, too, right? You have reach, I mean. Oh, you're right. So, you could you could have done a lunge there. Oh, okay. Uh, crap, where's uh, lunge is, lunge is oh, the one I, I just did, so that's the move and attack one from one. So, basically, it would be... Um, you were at 14 before, right? Or were you at 15? I yeah, was. So you'd be at 16 no, now, so you can make an attack at a negative 3. Yeah. Let's do it. Ah, Oh boy. Okay, this thing's gonna dodge. No. Um, Good entrance. That's <laughs> great entrance. <laughs> yeah. 32. Um, your damage is 4. 36 minus 3. 33. Um, that is more than... It's not more than double its mortality, but it's going to have to make a death roll. Yeah, it dies. How's it look? Cause you hit this semi semi-solid thing and kill it. Yeah, Makiko busts through the wall and just lunges and impales this thing uh, through the chest, ripping upwards and is watching it crumble to the ground as she um, pulls the Naginata away. What is all this? Yeah, you see a bunch of strange creatures about um, that gives you serious pause even after you dispatch that thing. Um, Onazaki, you are up. Alright. Um, he's gonna try to... This guy or through him, if I can. Um, you need to make a athletics roll versus a 14, or you get or you lose an AP and stop. Actually, could I just uh, m 
you can do that lunge. You can do that same space. lunge attack, which I added a few days ago, which is you move one space and attack for a negative three. Okay. Let's try okay. that then. And that costs, that's actually a four. It costs four to do. So, Mikiko, you should be a 17, actually. Okay. Go ahead and attack and just put a negative three in your. Right there on additional mods, I have negative. Yeah, put a negative right six already. in then. Okay. Okay, it's going to try to dodge. No. 24, 29, head strike, 34, uh, death save. No, you got it by one. Oh, nice. How does that look? Yeah, so Onozaki spins around and I think you have to hit them in the head. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it brings the blade down right into uh, right into the side of its face. Uh, yeah, it's it just it kind of they they turn into ash. These things as you cut their heads off. And um, Father Vecino, you're up. Uh, Paul Vestina doesn't know what to do other than just keep swinging his rifle. You can do a reckless attack, which would give you some benefit, give you three benefits. It, it did a reckless attack last time, so it's actually... Sure, I'll do a reckless attack. He's just wildly swinging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and give yourself a uh, three benefits on your attack. That is with three minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, you're not trained, are you? Well, it does have a uh, it does have a hardship on its defense. So let's see. Two hardships. It's tough. You hit it. Um, so <laughs> that'd be like uh, I'd give it two damage for an improvised weapon. Um, so that'd be um, five. <laughs> oh, hit it in the leg. Not enough to hurt it. It just smacks off its leg, but you hit it so weakly it really doesn't do anything. Plus it has armor. Um. Alright. Uh, Aki. Would you like to do anything? Aki's still at five. Oh, oh yeah, that's... Okay, yeah, okay. I know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, they're just like you didn't, chilling right, out here. She's run away. Um, it attacks you back, Father. Well, actually, it it doesn't feel you're much of a threat, so it's actually going to go for Makiko. Would you like to do an opportunity attack on it? Yes. Father Fustino, asking Father Fustino first. Yes, please. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, that costs uh, a normal attack, but you're immediately able to do it. Um, I think opportunity attacks actually have a offensive technique. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah, just go ahead and swing away there. Oof. Yeah, it just misses. Um now, as, as it tries to advance on you, Makiko, you get to make an opportunity attack if you wish to, because you threaten it at range. Um, you can make any off you can make any offensive attack that makes sense. Mm. Let's see. Yep, we're fine. I'm going to do... <laughs> I think I'm going to do... Uh... Uh... Fuck. I 
I don't even know. Um, I'll just do a regular okay. hit okay. then as it comes in. Um, yeah. And it's in with a hardship, right? Uh, why would the hard? Oh yes, because opportunity attacks are a hardship. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he moved one, two. He's gonna. He tries to dodge or parry, I should say. Nope. Um. So that's thirteen, seventeen, fourteen. Um. That's enough to give him a wound. That wounds him. How does it look as he tries to get close on you, but you? Give him a nice cut. Yeah, as he comes in, um, Kiko kind of levels her Naginata at him, and she just slices him across the belly as he comes towards her. Or sorry, across the uh, left arm. Um, just slicing into it. Okay. Um, Mitsutaka. scurry over here and try and repay the magistrate for killing one of the spirits that was attacking him. Did you, uh, you moved one, is that right? Uh, two. Um, actually. yeah, two's, two's a bad range, you can't attack from there. Yeah, you can move, and that'll get you at 17, and then... You'll be able to attack before him, but uh, actually, you might you might still be up. I think you are. So go ahead, because you go before. Oh, you're actually after Ketsuyori, but go ahead. It, it, they don't affect each other. Go ahead. So you can attack. A five. Uh, he's gonna try to dodge. Uh, or block, I mean. Um, he actually should be at 20 already. Oh, just barely is able to get it up. <laughs> yeah, he's able to deflect your hand just at the last minute there. Um, Katsuyori. <sighs> oh, boy. <clears throat> Not getting an advantage right away. He's going to continue to try to press it. Um, sensing maybe he can get his opponent off balance. He's going to make a, another reckless. Okay. Oh, man. Oh my yes. god. Um Yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna try to block, man. That's all I can do. Um Alright, so twenty two base plus your weapon is six, right? And I think yep. the didn't I, doesn't uh, the seal give you more than that? The seal uh, gives me. It's only it's only okay. benefits. So, so it's, 28. So that's 25 right there. Um, oh, it's not quite a mortality roll. So it's a wound. How does it look as you wound this thing? It looks just completely shocked that you've hurt it. So he um, faints high and waits to see the shoulder move, and the shoulder does meet. It does go uh, where he expects it to, and then he brings the blade down uh, from his hip, and then goes lower. And uh, from that faint, he slices across the uh, the left thigh of this monster that claims it is Oda Nobunaga, and pulls back the blade to prepare. You are not so fearsome. All right, so that was a reckless attack. So 
get one hardship on your defense. Um, that puts him at 19, so Onozaki, you're up. Hi. He's coming to uh, Katsuyori. You can charge from That's... that distance. So that would be. Are you gonna? Are you gonna try to charge? Can charge uh, and attack. I'll do that. Yeah. So first thing you need to do is make a um, resist against fear. You need a vigilance roll. Got to beat a twenty-two. Is the first one doesn't doesn't work still, or is it? That was a new that one? was just Katsuyori. If you made a fear roll, it wasn't against him, I don't believe. Or or did you did you make one against him? Yeah, yeah. In the, in oh, the original oh, you did. Uh, okay. When, all right. Cool. Um, all right. So yeah, go ahead and make your attack. You do get a hardship for charging, but. Rolled crappy on that. Okay, so let's just how many you move three squares, right? Or did you make move four? Um, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So that would be I'll put you at twenty-five. Um, okay, so a thirty-one. Uh he's actually now being ganged up on. Um, so I think actually you should have got a benefit on that roll. Um, go ahead and roll me a d10. See if it's better than an eight or a seven, actually. Uh, no, okay. Um, so he's got to beat a 31. He's going to try to normally parry here. Nope. Uh, nine. Um, so you you hit the left arm. Uh, Fourteen and eleven. That'll give him a injury. As it look if you as you scrape him on the arm. Yeah, Onozaki comes charging and ah and. Uh, Brings the blade across, uh, catching him across the arm. Uh, his legs are kind of stance wide, and blood splatters on the wall there. Did I just move up to 25? Yeah, I moved you up there. Yep. Okay. Thank yep. You. Um, so I believe he's it. So it's him. So he is actually hurt a little bit. He is going to go after the guy that came at him the hardest. So he's going to do actually a reckless attack versus Katsuyori. Okay. 23. I will, uh, I will dodge. Yeah, and make sure you give dodge. yourself a hardship on that dodge. Mm. Got it. Yeah, it just the accumulation of wounds um, from these blades begin to cut him. Um, his non magical injuries. Um, okay, uh, so I believe. Uh, Mikiko, you're up. I'm gonna aim. Mm hmm. Okay. Can I still go before him? Just one. Okay. Mm hmm. Got it. Uh, Mitsutaka, you're up.
eight. Okay. He's gonna try to dodge. It's a hit. Um, so, Tonto, your new Tonto is a six. Um, yeah, that uh, is enough to give him an injury. It just barely gives him an injury. How does it look as you stab him? Uh, it just finds a place where his, his armor isn't. Gives him a nick in the arm. It's enough to distract him for a moment. Hopefully the magistrate can finish him off. <clears throat> okay. Um, Alright. Um, so I believe the magistrate is up now. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, Makiko, she is... Uh, I'd take a... Um, hardship. Yeah, take a hardship for being this close. Yep. Uh, and also negative three from being unveiled. Uh, but I have a benefit for A. Mm -hmm. Um, sure, bounces out. Let's go. Not bad. It's gonna try to dodge. It's all right. Or block, I should say. That's a hit. Um, so it's 12, 16, 13. That's enough to give him another wound. How does that look? Now working in conjunction with Mitsutaka as he stabs into it. Um, Makiko sees an opening uh, for its right arm as it's striking at Mitsu or as it's trying to dodge Mitsutaka. Um, she lashes out, tries to double back and block her nagina. She's able to cut it uh, across the arm again. Yeah, it's it's floundering over there. Um, it's a. Uh... It actually is just going to reckless attack uh, Mitsutaka. Um, that roll should be a uh, should be a three. Yeah, it misses. It's just hopelessly injured. Just swings haphazardly, and Mitsutaka's easily able to step aside. Okay. Um, 21. Katsuyori. We must press the advantage. Reckless attack again. I think I reckless attacked last time, didn't I? He did. This could be bad. This could be bad. I guess I'll see what the... 24. Oh. Um, I'm going to try to disarm again. Oh, that's so hard, though. No, I'm just going to normal block. Hit. 11. Plus six, seventeen, uh, minus three, fourteen, minus four for his armor, ten. That's a uh, injury. How's that look? He swings again, and um, seeing that his opponent is going to catch the most of it, he just gets in a quick uh, torso strike. Uh, along what openings he can find and slices uh, a gash across the hole in, <laughs> above the <laughs> hole in his stomach uh, <laughs> Father Festino, you're up. what would you like to do? Uh, Father Festino, after finally having a little bit of breathing room uh, 
nervously grabbing at his uh, satchel and starts reloading his weapon. Okay, so that'll put you at 27. All right, uh, Nabunaga. So Nabunaga is going to recklessly attack uh, Katsuyori. He just is almost ignoring the guy with the huge Nodachi for whatever reason, but um, got to go against main guy. 22. Continue to try not to die. <clears throat> Dodge. Not dying is always a good play. Oh, I s just can't <laughs> can't get you. You're just too fast. Nice. Twenty-six. Nice. Yeah, you guys are just swinging hard on each other, and uh, he is just coming up short. Um, Makiko. All right. Um. Makiko's tied. Uh, Makiko will just, um... I think I'm just gonna strike at this yep. thing. Oh, I got so close. Mm -hmm. Just give yourself a hardship. Yep. Um... That's a hit. Um... Of seven? No, no, no. Uh, let me see. Two, six. Yeah, it's just gives it another injury. At this point, it's just so beaten down that it just falls over as you like cut it. How does it look as you kill it? Uh, she strikes it. She would strike it in the left arm, then the right. Um, just trying to cut it apart, and she swings the naginata around and impales it in the chest, um, ripping to the side, away from Mitsutaka. Afterwards, she just kind of clears the blood from the blade, flicking it on the ground, and looks to him. Where are the others? I hear fighting in the next room. And with that, it is Mitsutaka's turn. Mitsu points through the doorway over here as he dashes this way to actually you know what he knows he's totally outclassed in the combat he'll go the other way he knows the father was injured yeah you go over and you you don't see any like obvious wounds on him because uh, he hit, was hit with a big club so, um, with that, it's Onazaki's turn. Is it possible for me to... Ah, actually, his guard's down right now, right? He, he is. Did a, by a, uh... What was it called? A, uh... That... Heavy attack type of uh... um, the reckless attack. Yeah, reckless attack gives you three benefits. Let's do it. And uh, kind of trying to taunt him a little bit, but uh, he shouts to him. Um, and this world is finished. It might be. Okay. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. Um, 38, 43, 39. Yikes. 39 says mortality threshold is 26. Uh, death roll versus a 39. Let's see. <coughs> How do you dispatch this demon? After shouting that, he brings the blade down. Uh, goes, like, right through his arm. 
and uh, taking his arm off and then coming halfway into his body, separating his spine and, and two uh, it leaves a blade in him as its blood's splattering out and slowly dropping back off of his blade. And he rips the blade out and uh, breathing heavily, nods towards Katsuyori. And with that, each of you feel a calm almost come over this place. You hear the birds outside chirp. Oh, I am sorry it took me so long to get over here. Uh, and uh, Cassiora looks around, making sure there's nothing else obvious about to threaten them, and then slowly sheathes a sword and looks to him as like. Well, Okazaki san, I must say I am thankful you did not take too long. He was a formidable foe. He puts a hand on his shoulder as of his younger nephew and You did well. Very good tactics. Holding him off, keeping him busy. I wish my sword had claimed his head, but a victory is a victory. He looks down at Nobunaga's, or whatever it is, remains and kind of points to him. Ah, his head is still there. What remains? And he uh, chuckles and then looks over. Makiko-san, I did not think you were going to come. How did you know we were here? And she kind of pauses and thinks for a moment. Well, it was the most logical place for you all to come. Mm. I mean, no, it's a I regret to say your child is not here. We will find him. While they're talking, Father Festino with his newly loaded rifle in an almost a, a panicky kind of way uh, is pivoting on the spot, aiming down one hall, and then quickly turning and looking down the other hall, and he has the rifle kind of swinging back and forth, looking down the halls. As Father Faustino is swinging his rifle around, he does notice actually two people coming down the hallway. He fires at them. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, shoot, go ahead, shoot. Do it. Do it. Aim at the Gation, shoot. No, no. Medium range, <laughs> medium baby. range. It's all over. <laughs> well, Gaijin, looks like the deal's <laughs> off. Looks like you're fucking slaughtered now, buddy. Well, no, hang on. You guys realize that the, the safest people in the... So, <laughs> he sh oh, he's, he, you know, it's he shoots... And he's so nervous, it just shoots straight up in the air, and like the floor <laughs> above it, like the it crumbles all around his head, and dust kind of <laughs> flies up around him, and everybody ducks, you know, but realizes that he just kind of shoots up. Hatsuo shakes his head, ah, oh, barbarian scum, and he steps out around the corner, and he's holding a child with him. Makiko just quickly sheaths her uh, Naginata and just <laughs> <laughs> It's the ugliest baby in Japan My beautiful baby I'm sorry, go ahead What? 
<laughs> no, it's just that's the only Yukio E baby art I could find. So go ahead. That's incredible. <laughs> And, and thank you for this mystical experience. I'll stop. <laughs> she runs over and runs over to Hatsuo and takes the babe up into her. Where did you find him? I found the other Budoka. He knew where the child was. He just simply nods. He isn't harmed. Thank you, that's so... And just holds the baby very close and looks over to the other. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. And thank you for helping liberate this place from the darkness that plagued it. Onizaki will um, get down on one leg and Put his put his blade down on the floor, or not down on the floor, but the blade to the floor, and still holding the hilt, and uh, bows very low. Mm-hmm. Katsuyui bows, and <clears throat> we are happy to assist Makiko-san to restore order to this place. I, since this evil is gone, may you rule long. I, I will make sure the streets are safe. Now that I have the babe back, I should be able to do much without uh, impediment. We will make sure to spread the word of our victory now, so that the people will know. Hey. Mm, She looks to Mitsutak. There seems to be a vacancy of tea houses within the city. Raven. He gives a bow. That was the reason for my visit, most honorable magistrate. Well, it did become much more than that, but I am sure we can go into some thorough discussions about it. But first, we should leave this place. Maybe it can eventually eventually be restored to its former glory. Hopefully the darkness that plagues this area is vanquished. Mm-hmm. Katsuyura will nod and look to the uh, the gaijin. Father Fascino, you may calm yourself. The air is relieved as you can see. You did well, Gaijin. I must admit I did not expect much from a foreigner, but you carry yourself as well as to be expected. And he will extend a hand. And Father Faustino will, will smile. I think in my case, doing well simply means being alive. And he reaches out and takes your hand. He will uh, grasp it in a warrior's sense just by the uh, the forearm and wrist. And... <laughs> Handle your business well, Gaijin, whatever it may be. Father Festino nods. My business is to give these weapons to someone who can use them better than I. Well, you have a fine partner in the magistrate, should she choose to accept your offer. 
things to make you go soon. Makiko looks to the father. Well, it seems as if your weaponry... You will have to show me a more detailed... Uh, um, sample of it firing as she kind of looks around. It does not seem to do much here. Father Festino, he brushes some of the plaster from the ceiling off of his shoulder. <laughs> he says, yes, well, there'll be plenty of that, plenty of time for that. But for now, enjoy the reunion with your child. She nods towards him. Hi. She takes the baby up into her arms at cooing, and she will start to make her way out. The company that had come here to rescue Makiko's child and set this place right, finally, exits the temple, still burnt, but it seems that the dark shadow that had cast over the Honoji district uh, has seemed to lift and over the next weeks and months uh, each of you have your own um, adventures um, and this is where we're going to call it um, thanks for playing um, this playtest of uh, Death to Bushido I hope everybody enjoy themselves and thank you for playing thanks for running hell yeah we saved the fat baby. Yeah, that thing, <laughs> man. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh my beautiful baby! <laughs> <laughs> like my my royal baby, my royal blooded baby. Did you produce this baby with some filthy kaiju? It's part oni. <laughs> Is this a foreign baby? <laughs> the demon. One of the monsters. Monster, yeah. Why are you bringing a monster in here? Please, no! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>